Hey everyone, I'm Erica and I am so excited to share this example on building a four layer DSPy program. In this demo, we'll be taking a query and generating an entire blog post on this topic. And I'm using the Weavey blogs as background information. So I can ask what is hybrid search or what is Reftivec and I will get an entire blog post that is answering my question. And what's awesome about this is in the beginning half of the demo, we'll be building out the program by defining the four layer signatures. So we'll start off with the outline, but then we also have topic to paragraph. So for each uh, topic, it will generate a paragraph and then it will proofread it to make sure that the blog post is coherent. And then finally, the fourth layer is creating a title about the blog post. Once we have this program, we then want to optimize it by using the Bootstrap ViewShot compiler in DSPy. What this is doing is taking a forward pass through the program and including the input and output examples as part of the prompt. So as you can imagine, large language models benefit from having an example in the prompt because it's kind of like a hand-holding approach. It's saying, oh, this is what this is what is the expected input from my program and then this is what i need to generate so this is like a great way to make sure that your application is working to its best ability i am so excited and let's just dive into the video so we are going to be taking a query and converting it into an entire blog post we are achieving this by building out a four layer dspy program we're also going to use a retriever, so we need a vector database to retrieve the relevant chunks as background information in order to generate a new blog post. We'll start by configuring DSPy and connecting to our Weave8 client. So I am first starting off by defining which LLM model I want to use. So in this example, I am using GPT-4, but DSPy has a plethora of models that you can choose from and configure this based off of how you want to build out your application. Um, so here I am connecting to my Weave8 client. I am running it locally and there, the YAML file is in the Weave8 recipes, um, but you can also create a cluster on Weave8 cloud service. Um, then in the next step, I am defining that I'm using the Weave8 retriever model in DSPy and just connecting to my Weave8 blog chunk class and then uh, configuring it to use GPT-4 and then also the Weave8 cluster that I already have. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to define your schema and import data into your Weave8 instance, but I highly recommend checking out the videos on this YouTube channel to learn how to do that. The key to building out a DSPy program is by breaking out a large task into subtasks. So in this demo, we are taking a query and converting it into an entire blog post. So the large language model first has to start off with creating an outline and then going from topic to paragraph and then reviewing it to make sure it is cohesive and there aren't any issues with it and then creating a title. So. In order to do that, we have to define each signature in order to build out the program. The first signature that we'll want to define is the question to blog outline. So here I am passing in my prompt and then I need to define the input and output field. So what I am giving to the language model is the question along with the context, which is the relevant chunks. And then it's going to output a comma separated list of topics. And just to show this, I want to give an example of what this will look like. So I have my question, how does hybrid search and we work? It's going to retrieve the top five chunks that answer this question. And then now it's going to start generating the outline from it. So here I have introduction to hybrid search and Weave8, the working of hybrid search, understanding dense and sparse vectors. And if you aren't familiar with hybrid search, it is just combining keyword and vector search together. And then you can see as we scroll down the input to the language model. So this is what the template looks like. So we have the question and the context, which is what we fed in and just defined as the input field. 
then it will have a reasoning on why it did that, and then also output the blog outline. So I have my question, my context. So again, this is the these are the blog chunks, and then the reasoning. So this green text is actually what the language model is typing or writing. So it's giving a reasoning on why it chose these, uh, why it chose the outline, and then again is outputting it. The next signature is the topic to paragraph. So again, I begin by defining my prompt and the input and output field. So I am passing in the topic from the outline that was just generated, and then also retrieving from the vector database again and passing in the relevant uh, context to the topic. And then I wanna show what this looks like. Um, so here, again, I have my question of how does hybrid search and weave work, retrieving at the top five, and then I see that it has generated this paragraph from the first topic. So when we're piecing together the program, I'll show how we are iterating through each topic and generating a paragraph. So in this example, it's only doing it once, but later on in the notebook, I show you how to loop through each outline or each topic within the outline to generate the paragraph. So it's a cohesive blog post. And then again, scrolling down, you can see the template that was sent to the language model. So again, we have the topic, context, the reasoning, and then the paragraph. And you can see there is my question, my retrieved chunks, and then the reasoning behind it, and then it's generating this paragraph. And again, when you are printing this out, it's really cool to see the separated colors of what the uh, of what GPT-4 is generating. The third signature is to proofread the entire blog post that it just generated. And then the last step is the title generator. So again, each signature has its prompt and input and output field. Now we'll piece it all together. So we'll start off by initializing the program by passing in each signature that we just configured. Notice how each signature has a chain of thought module attached to it. That is because before it is generating an outline or paragraph, we want it to reason about it so that the output is as good as possible. Next, we have the forward pass, which is defining how the program can process its inputs. So starting off with passing in the question, we're going to need to retrieve the relevant chunks and taking the top five. Then we're going to create a blog outline from it and separate each topic, but with a comma. Then in order to generate a paragraph from the topic, we'll need to strip away the comma so that the each topic corresponds with the paragraph, and then we'll pass in the entire blog into the proofreader for it to review it, and then we'll generate a title from it, and then you'll have the final blog with the title and then paragraphs underneath. Now that we have built our program, let's test it out. So here I have my question of how does hybrid search and Weaviate work? And then I am passing it over to the blog post writer, which we've just configured, and now we're gonna print it out. So as you can see, we have the title, so exploring hybrid search in Weeby, a deep dive into machine learning and its benefits, wow. Then we have uh, paragraphs about what it, defining what Weeby is, its features, um, how machine learning plays a crucial role in hybrid search, et cetera, et cetera. And it even ends the last paragraph with in conclusion. That's amazing. And to spice it up a bit, I want to ask a new question on how e-commerce is reimagined with Weaviate. So as you can see, it's generated a title of leveraging Weaviate for e-commerce capabilities, benefits, and future prospects. And then it has the paragraphs underneath. Now that we have our blogs, let's rate them using another DSPy program. So here I have my prompt that it needs to output a rating based on a, on a scale from one to five. Um, I have my input field, which is the entire blog post. Then I have my rating and I'm saying that it is very important that it is outputting only a float value and nothing else because if it adds reasoning to it or just added text, that is just noise. I simply just need a float value. I am building out the metric program that is 
using the chain of thought module on just to reason on why it is outputting a solid three or a four on the blog posts. And just to show this, I passed in the two blogs that we've already written. So the hybrid search one and the e-commerce. Both of them were rated a 4.5, but here we have the template printed out. So we have the prompt along with the input, the reasoning, and the output. And then we have the context and then the reasoning behind it. Again, it's in the green text. And then we have our rating right here. And that's how it got to the 4.5. Now let's optimize our DSPy program by building out a simple train test split. So we use the training data set to optimize the program and then evaluate it using the test set. So here we can see that I am building out I'm using the evaluation module in DSPy in order to do this. Um, so here are the questions along with the blog that it generated, and then it has the metric, and this is based off of the test data set. Now that we have our DSPy program, we should optimize it to make sure that it is generating the absolute best blog post. So how we can do that is by using the Bootstrap ViewShot compiler in DSPy. So what this is doing is it's going to take one pass through the program that we have defined and take the input and output that was generated. And I just want to say that it's only going to do the pass once because I defined it here in the max bootstrap demo. But what this is doing is it's going to create it's going to take the question and generate an outline from it and include that to the question to outline signature. Then it's also going to do that for the topic to paragraph along with the proofreader and the title. So each signature will have an input and output example so that the language model is kind of has like a hand holding effect because it's like, oh, I know what to do because it was included in my prompt. Now that we have our compiled program, we'll just want to save it and load it for future use. Now that we have our compiled program, we'll just want to load that in to our blog post writer, which we defined earlier in the demo. So in order to test it out, let's see what kind of blog it comes up with now with this optimized prompt. So in the beginning, of course, we have the title along with the paragraphs. And just at a first glance, it seems like it's uh, more fleshed out, which is awesome because I feel like for blogs, having more information um, leads to a better blog post. But then we also have the template just printed it out of the prompt along with the input and then the output of GPT-4. And then we'll just evaluate it. Um, so now you can see we have a table of the questions along with the blog that it wrote and then the metric. So I think for the two blogs that we wrote the first time, it was a 4.5. But as you can see on the blog post on what is HNSW, it scored a 4.8 out of 5. Thanks so much for watching this video. You can connect with us by one, subscribing to our YouTube channel, finding us on X and LinkedIn, and then also finding us on GitHub. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video along with the demo and take care.